Good evening, everybody. My name is Juan Acosta. And on behalf of SACAC and the Inclusion Access and Success Committee, I'd like to welcome you to tonight's webinar, Personal and Supplemental Essays. And I'd like to introduce you all to Samantha Kriedemeyer, who will be leading tonight's program. I will be on hand on the back end answering any questions and directing questions to, to Samantha. So please feel free to use that chat feature or the question feature for that. And with that being said, I will hand it over to Samantha. And Samantha, again, thank you so much for helping us tonight. Thank you so much, Juan, and thank you all for being here. I am so excited to talk to you all about this process. It's one of my very favorites in the college admissions process, and I think uh, in working with students, it's one of my favorite ways to get to know uh, you all better. So let's go ahead and dig in. Okay, so if you have not been through this process before, uh, the purpose of the essay is that the universities really want to get to know you as a person. Not, you're going to be more than just the data that's presented on that information that you submit. Uh, this is the closest that most university admissions readers will have to actually having a conversation with you, uh, especially if you aren't able to get on campus or you're not able to meet with an admissions representative. So with that being said, be authentic. Remember that the person who is reading this essay is a real person too. And I think that they'll sort of know if you're just writing to what they want to hear, you need to write your story and your truth. So show us your interest, your personality, your character, your tone, your style, all of those things are important and contribute to your application as a whole. Uh, these essays should give, give us a little bit more insight to who you are in the classroom as well, how you present your ideas, um, understanding that you've had a significant amount of time to work on these essays. I hope that they are great reflections of who you are as a student and of, again, your voice and what that could look like at their university. Um, this is typically the aspect of the application process where admissions readers can, can tell if you're going to be the best fit with the cohort that they have as an incoming class. Um, it's the highest ranked non-academic feature in your application. So, Outside of the, the test scores, and we'll talk about the other aspects of the application process that are included in this, um, in this application file, um, essays are the part that you get full control over, and it's where you are able to sort of talk about the part of your life that's been most important um, or most impactful to, to you. That being said, um, the process is the most important part. This is your opportunity to grow as a person. Um, I am a social emotional counselor as well as a college counselor. So I feel like uh, the process naturally for me and for my students go hand in hand. Um, I think that in this application process, which we know is imperfect, um, it's still really good. And I think there are a lot of opportunities for you to grow, to learn how um, to be self-reflective and to talk about the experiences that are uniquely you. And in a way that that you are able to express what you want in your life. So there are two ways that universities read files. Um, number one, we have the data-driven read. This is the one that is the quantitative process. So how many honors courses does your school offer? How many AP or IB courses are offered versus what's reflected on your transcript? Are are you taking advantage of what's offered? Um, have you stacked your schedule with a lot of easy classes to maintain your GPA? Or have you challenged yourself and maybe you've had to struggle even when some of your classmates are taking the easy way out, right? You have two um, transcript options that some of these universities focus on. One would be, we call it all courses GPA. So that's gonna be the classes that uh, maybe include your your elective classes or your art classes or something that's not necessarily your core courses. Um, and some universities will only look at those core courses uh, in when considering your GPA. So that's a, another piece of data that is, is a factor in your file. And then finally, those fun SAT and ACT standardized test scores. Um, maybe I am naive about this, but I think most universities that I've encountered, I've spoken to, are going to accept either the ACT or the SAT, so you don't have to pick and focus on just one. Um, as my personal recommendation, let's go ahead and make sure that you have the most experience, um, so that way you're, you're testing in a way that's going to benefit you and your application. 
in that same thought, um, we have holistic or whole reads. So this is where the university is going to still look at your quantitative data, the numbers that stack up in comparison to each other. Um, but we're also going to talk about your qualitative data. This is where your recommendations, that's going to be from your school counselor, from your teachers, um, from any like faculty member that has really helped you and seen you in that classroom uh, atmosphere as well as your essay, both the personal and the um, supplemental essays that we'll talk about, as well as your activities list, all the awards you've been offered, and then the context of your application. So what you have at your school and the context of where you live and operate and how successful you've been, um, that is all important whenever you consider about the schools that uh, we're comparing you against. So the other universities, um, I'm sorry, the other high schools where you have applicants in that same um, pool, they kind of want to see what you're doing in your school um, and understanding your school as a whole. I hope that I that made sense. Okay, so I like the big picture first. So um, Whenever you think about the personal essay, it's going to be your personal statement. So uh, typically it's your nonfiction narrative using I. It's going to be your perspective. And the focus is on you as a student, as a person. It's your opportunity to express who you are and who you want to be. Your voice, identity, personality, values. Um, you're kind of selling yourself to these schools. Um, through your essay, you want to express how you're going to uh, contribute to the community, how you're going to fit in that community. Um, and bring that diversity. I feel like that's a lot of pressure to put on you, and I understand that, um, but I hope that you realize that there are so many different things about you as a student that make you unique and that make you um, a perfect fit for some school, right? We The idea of a perfect fit may be unrealistic, but I know there's a university that's going to match with uh, your interests and your talents and all of the great things that make your application stand out. Um, the hard part about this is that we are offering 650 words for you to make your case. So there are a few different ways and strategies that we can uh, really structure this essay to fit into that 650 word limit. Um, I like to think about it like um, the piping, whenever you're like piping in like a cake or something, um, you want to condense all of that stuff, all of that icing into the, into the perfect little um, structure. And so I think sometimes the squeezing it all into 650 words actually makes your essay better and helps you uh, facilitate an essay that's got the right word choice, not just random adjectives, but the right word choice to be um, as, as uh, descriptive as you can. If you haven't looked at these already, these are the Common App essay prompts. Um, so these are the ones that we'll focus on sort of addressing. Uh, there are seven. I, I typically like to think of the first six. Um, that's where most of my students uh, sort of live. The first one I just highlighted, um, background, identity, interest, or talent. Um, so that's really like, I think most of the essays that I've read are going to um, sort of exist within that prompt. It's your background, identity, interest, or talent. Guys, these questions are tough for adults, right? So we're asking you at 17, 18 to talk about your identity and to, to be vulnerable and to express all of the ideas that you have and the goals that you have uh, in the future. Um, so, so this is going to take you being a little bit reflective and it's going to take you thinking about who you are and who you want to be. Uh, in the same way, that second prompt is the obstacle prompt. So this is an experience that you've encountered that has uh, allowed you to grow. Not everyone has um, an obstacle that they want to share with a reader, or maybe you feel like the obstacle isn't, uh, uh, my students are on TikTok, you know, so uh, maybe it's not the TikTok trend that uh, is going to be the most unique or the most um intense that's going to get them the attention from the readers. Uh, again, I want you to go back to this is you, this is your essay, your context, and I think you need to figure out how you as a person can address these and be comfortable and confident in your answer. Um, the third prompt, when a time when you questioned or challenged a belief or idea. Um, this is a good experience um, for a lot of students to consider because I think you're in high school, right? Like you have challenged and questioned beliefs and ideas. That's sort of what you're known for as teenagers. Um, number four, something that has, that someone has done for you that has made you happy or thankful. And again, we'll sort of come back to this idea in a little bit, but whenever you're talking about the answer to this prompt, um, sometimes I think students, 
you can be so grateful and so gracious in talking about something that someone has done for you that you're talking more about that person than you are yourself, which is just a natural um, sort of way that, that we exist. When we're thankful for somebody, we are gushy, right? So we still need to find a way to rein that prompt back in to be about you and show your values um, as being evident, even when you're writing about somebody else. Um, number five, an accomplishment, event, or realization that sparked a period of personal growth and that new understanding of self. So that's a really cool opportunity, again, for you to talk about um, maybe something that you've struggled with or maybe a great experience that you've had. Um, and we'll talk about different ways to brainstorm that in just a second. Number six is a topic, idea, or concept you find so engaging that you lose all track of time. Um, I've seen some really great answers to number six, because I think this is another really awesome prompt that helps you delve into what you're interested in and not necessarily feel like you're just writing what the reader wants to hear. Um, and then number seven, this is the scary one to me. I'm very uh, particular, right? So uh, an essay on a topic of your choice. I think it's really cool, especially if you're very creative and you um, feel like you immediately know what you want to write about, um, but maybe it doesn't lend itself to the other six prompts. This may be the prompt that you want to brainstorm. So let's go on to the supplemental essays. Um, these are about 250 words, so they're significantly shorter than the uh, personal essays. And most of the time you're gonna see this why us prompt. Um, at, at whatever university you're thinking of, why is that the school you wanna apply to? I know that some students out there may apply to universities that are highly selective or that have a great reputation just because they want to try um, to see if they can get into that school. It's a trophy, right? And I understand that mindset. I really do. But this paragraph, this 250 words that you're writing, this is important for you whenever you're actually considering, what do I like about the school? Um, so why is this school the right the right fit for you? What major do they have that's going to be directly aligned with what you're interested in pursuing in your future? What internship opportunities do they have? What cool resources do they have on campus that make it unique in the context of my college list? So again, I know I have it written here, but you're not like creating their newest brochure. You're writing again about yourself and why you would fit with their university. Um, so I've just told you this is a really hard thing to do. So how do we even get started with it? Um, I have a toddler. So my favorite TV show for him to watch is Bluey. And I, I really personally love this idea that obstacles do not block the path. They are the path. I know that writing this essay is big and scary, but it's a process. And so you need to be able to be comfortable in that gray area and know there's a light at the end of the tunnel. This is a finite space where you're writing a reflective essay and it's going to be hard and you're going to do it. And I hope that through that process, you'll get a little bit more understanding of yourself. That's the, that's the whole hope now in reality. I am terrible whenever I'm, I've, I'm given a blank prompt and a sheet of paper and said, start writing. That first sentence, it kills me. Um, I feel like, uh, especially in this TikTok environment where we're listening to so many great resources, there's a lot of hype about that first sentence, right? Like if I hear the word hook one more time and the pressure that you guys are putting on yourselves to have the perfect hook is tough. Um, so it's a very intimidating first line. So I think Instead, we'll, we'll just live with whatever that first line is, and we'll get to the meat of it first. Um, so first, I want you to kind of consider what values you want the readers to see in your essay. What is important to you in life? Uh, where do you place emphasis and priority? Um, some of the examples that I've included from College Essay Guy, who uh, is a wonderful resource if you've never heard of him or have used him, there's a link at the end of this presentation. Some of the values that he mentioned would be um, meaningful work, leadership, growth, gratitude. These are values that you have exhibited in your life or that you want to continue to exhibit uh, and to pursue. So if family is something you really value, then what have you done um, in your life so far or in what ways do you plan to continue that uh, ensuring that value has space in your life? So once you figured out what values you have and you appreciate and you want to pursue, what are some experiences from your life that exemplify these values? Um, one great example would be a memory uh, of you as a child at your grandmother's house. Maybe you're making a traditional cultural meal um, with lots of descriptive language. And in that 
in that example, in that beautiful little description of a time in your life, I can see so many different things that are important to you from growth, um, your family values to your tone, again, your style, the way that you think. Um, a lot of that will, will lend itself to your personality. And I think that memory that you have, that really cool experience that you have can be really, really great to write about because it's important to you. So again, rather than writing for what somebody else wants to hear, you're getting to write about your experience, which is meaningful to you. And that's going to be evident in your essay. And if you're still stuck, what would your best friend say? What would your teacher say? Your coach? If I were to ask them, hey, what, what is Johnny really like as a person? What, do, what is important to him? How is he as a student? What would they say? Would they talk about how good you are to your friends? Would they talk about what a great brother you are or what a great teammate you are, how, how hardworking you are? Um, all of those characteristics that maybe somebody else sees in you, maybe you're too humble to talk about, or maybe you um, just really haven't like created time in your life to sit and think, who am I as a person? Um, now's the time to think about that. And now's the time to see if you can place priority on some of those values, because that's what I think is most important in your essay, is how can we get universities to see that you are so much more than that data and so much more than that student organization that you're in. You're in that organization because of your values. I hope that hope that's clicking. It's really weird for me not to see your faces. So I hope that's clicking. Okay. And I, again, I'm, I like charts. I like a lot of um, graphic organizers. So if this is something that you also are like, I made a little chart. So if you on the left hand side, look at the experience and that description. So for example, listening to Willie Nelson songs with my grandfather, um, if you can write about that experience, then maybe some of the values that we see within that experience would be your appreciation of family, of growth, like the growth from being a child to where you are now, um, the, the future growth that you hope um, to see in your life, an appreciation for change and for um, like the beauty in life transitions. Um, okay. Another experience would be that you created a hygiene, a hygiene drive for a local senior center. Again, I can see in that experience that you, uh, your values are meaningful work, community engagement, and empathy. Um, I think in any experience you have, if there's something that is important to you in life, there is probably a reason and probably a value connected to it. Um, so again, I'm a very drought values driven sort of uh, essay critiquer. And so I would love to see all of the experiences that you have um, lend themselves to a value that your reader will see. So now that you have your values picked out, how are you going to articulate that um, to your readers? So there are a couple, there are several options, of course, but two primarily, again, that um, the college essay guy has encouraged and that I've seen in the essays that I've read. Um, Narrative structures first. So that's going to be your chronological experience. Again, that may be the time that you were in the kitchen when your grandfather was cooking and um, significant detail, very like uh, tangible details, right? All five of the senses are engaged and it's almost like I'm there with you in your memory. Um, yes, you're talking about a memory, but again, in all of that, how can I see who you are as a person and how can I see what you're going to bring to the table at this university? Option two, a montage structure. Um, this one's a little bit, I'm not going to say more fun, but it's more fun <laughs> for me. So uh, it's a selection of experiences or values that are strung together by a theme or a motif. I was an English teacher, so maybe that's why I sort of am more drawn to this. Um, so there are some examples that... Um, like a jewelry box. You open a jewelry box and here are the different pieces of jewelry from your life. And so can you talk about those pieces and those experiences that you remember as a result of seeing those pieces? And again, in those experiences, how do they relate to your values? Um, College Essay Guy has a sample uh, on his website that is about laptop stickers and how those laptop stickers um, are sort of a compilation of so many different aspects of a person's personality and character. Um, my recommendation for you would be if you don't know where to start, but you you have an idea, write it out, talk a lot in, in one different direction and see which way your essay starts sort of lending itself. Um, again, it's a process. So you're not going to have it written the first time that you type it out. So it's going to take some honing, some fine tuning. And I think you will find the natural path if you want it to look more narrative or more like a montage with a theme. 
And then we have our supplemental essays. Um, Again, I, I think that I cannot emphasize this enough that you need to be organized in your essay planning process. So of your college list essays, which university requires a supplemental essay? Um, I've had students who like on their laptop, they have a little notepad and that's where they write down what universities require which type of essay. I've had some students make color-coded Excel spreadsheets. They had my heart, right? Um, whatever works for you, just stay on top of it and stay organized. Um, most universities are probably going to ask something like, why us? So again, be specific, do your research. Why is it that you are interested in attending this university? Um, is there is there something really interesting about like their scheduling? Is there a really cool like winter experience that you would love to have? Um, that shows them that you've invested your time in this university research and in this process, and you see how their university has something unique that fits, again, your unique self. And again, yep, it's a it's a why us question. You do want to talk about that university and you don't want to submit one university's why us essay to the wrong university, right? Like make sure you're submitting to the correct university. But again, it's still about you. So you may talk about some really cool schedule option that that university has, but I want you to tie that back into you. So why is that a good option for you? What makes you the best candidate for a school that has this feature? Um, so again, tie it all back into you. Um, and then one thing that I would like for you to avoid, I, I read it every year, but I love Boston and that's why I want to attend this school. Well, again, there are a lot of options in Boston. There are a lot of options in New York. Let's talk something more specific that I'm, I'm ready to enjoy the city. Um, be specific. What is it about that university that is a great fit for you? And then I actually included a couple examples here. So the University of Chicago, if you've never read their essay options, they are fabulous. And I, I really hope that after this, you'll just go check them out. Um, so they do have the required uh, required supplemental in addition to that personal. Um, and of course, it's the why us, basically. So how does the University of Chicago satisfy your desire uh, for a particular kind of learning community and future? So this question is what is written to where it lends uh, itself to your voice and your preferences. And then you get to pick one more optional um, supplemental question. And there are several more listed than just this, but they're all such fun questions. It's It allows you to be creative. So for example, where have all the flowers gone? Pick a question from a song title or lyric and give it your best answer. Of course, this is going to be a fun, a fun topic for you, right? Like this is something that's supposed to allow your personality to sort of shine. Um, but again, I want you to always go back to what is the subtle meaning between the lines? What is the reader going to see about me? Um, how is my answer going to tell them more about who I am as a person and who I want to be and what kind of candidate I would be on their campus? So seriously, go check out the supplemental questions. It's a lot of fun. Okay. Now you've gone through, you've done your draft. What comes next? Um, so the revision part is a little bit tough and it totally depends on who you are as a writer. Um, but I think the way I like to think about it, start with the easy eliminations, cliche phrases like in this day and age, um, those can go, do they, do they mean anything? Not really. Uh, you can probably replace in this now, now in this day and age with a single word, um, or you can maybe just not include it at all. Um, wordy phrases due to the fact that y'all that just is because right <laughs> because is the exact same reason or the same same meaning as that phrase so if there's a way that you can tweak it like those are small little ways that you can get so many words back um the words that and it if you go back and you look at your essays there's really no place, no reason to include that and it they don't have much meaning they're just sort of placeholders in a sentence so, the majority of the time, if you can tweak that sentence and rework that sentence, um, you can shorten it, condense it. And again, that icing piping tool, um, you're going to condense it to make it so much richer and use so many more specific words. Um, adverbs and adjectives, again, not critical. Um, sometimes, especially with that narrative structure essay, you want to be able to um, to be descriptive and all of those things. Um, but Adverbs and adjectives like the L-Y words, I think was it Ernest Hemingway, right? Said delete all the adverbs and adjectives and you've got yourself a story. So I think that you can absolutely eliminate some of that word count by deleting those adverbs and adjectives. Now, 
harder eliminations because you're trying to be the boss of your own essay and it's really hard whenever it's personal, especially if it's something you're being vulnerable, vulnerable about. Um, is this relevant? Is this content directly tied to the rest of the essay? Is it something that's really important to me? Um, does it express my value? If you can ask those questions about a sentence within your essay, and if the answer is no, you don't really need it. Um, is it just more fluff? Uh, you don't want you don't want fluff. Fluff. I would much rather have an essay that's a little shorter than that than that word count than an essay that is just using words just to fill up to six fifty. And then I would also encourage you to share with a trusted source. So is there a teacher, um, a parent, a friend, a mentor, someone who knows you and who knows um, your values, your character, your your heart? Um, if they read this essay, can they see you and can they can they appreciate what you're trying to say in this essay? Overall notes. So this is some um, some pro tip, right? I would encourage you to use a drive, either Google, Microsoft, whatever. Um, you're gonna brainstorm multiple prompts. You may even start a Google doc for every single prompt that's on that common app list. And I would encourage you just whatever it is that you write, don't delete it. Like you may not like it on a Monday, but by Wednesday, you're like, what did I say? That, that may actually have been a good idea. Um, or there may be one line in there that sparks something totally awesome that you won't think about for a couple more days. Um, so again, don't delete any of those drafts. And then again, I would overwrite. It's really easy to delete that fluff, delete those cliche words, and to, to really boil down to the important part of your essay. Um, I kind of like the idea of mining diamonds, right? Like you are going to have to go through some of the some of these rough ideas and some of the stuff that you're not sure about in order to find out what, what is the important part of your essay that you want to share. Don't be afraid to write answers to multiple questions or even multiple answers to multiple questions until you find the side of, of the essay that you're comfortable with, that you, that you say, yes, this is me. This is me on paper. This is my personality. This is what I enjoy. And this is who I want to be on paper. Um, now here, this is, this is totally you. So be vulnerable to your own boundaries and comfort level. Um, as long as you're sharing who you are, it is to your discretion, how vulnerable you want to be. Um, don't write what you think will get you in, but feel, feel open to, to writing who you are. Um, and I think that if you have a trusted mentor, a counselor, um, a coach, again, somebody that, that understands you, like they might be a really good resource to help you in navigating whether something is, is deep enough, or maybe they can push you just a little bit more to make sure that you're sharing, um, what makes you unique. And again, that coach may say, hey, you didn't realize that you like you are the most uh, encouraging student on the field. Um, so in in talking to other people who care about you, I guarantee you they're going to point something out about you that you're like, I didn't even realize I was doing that. And that could be a really cool way to learn more about yourself to include in your in your essay. So my goal for you, let's not be redundant. So when we talk about our essays and when we write, um, when we write our personal essay, supplemental, as many supplementals as your university asks, try really hard to add to that activities list, uh, not be repetitive. So if you haven't started looking at that activities list, like there are several different like strategies that you can use when writing the activities list that allow you to capitalize on some of the things that you've said in the activities list in your essay. Um, you can leave, you can, you can talk more about a single experience in your essay, or you could write about something totally different. I want you to think about the entire application process is you building out all of the different all of the different parts of you. Um, you're more than just a sheet of paper, right? So let's show them the entire 3D picture. Again, this is not the moment for you to be humble. You have worked your tail off for the last several years. So let's talk about that. Let's tell them what you've done. Let's tell them who you are, again, in the context of your school. Um, if you have started a club, like if you have um, really been a great friend, if you've worked a part-time job, if you've got um, a lot of... Uh, a lot of responsibility in your life, show them how you have navigated that responsibility as well as all the other incredible things that you've done. Um, this is your moment to shine. Make sure that you're putting everything out there that you possibly can so that they know who you are and, and can really like applaud you for it. 
And again, I know I've said it several times, let yourself grow with this process, um, learn more about yourself and don't shy away from sharing your strengths and your struggles. You're human. We all have struggles. We all have things that we worry about, but it's not that we are worrying about them. That's, that's going to be preventative from us writing a good essay. It's how did we worry about it and how do we grow and what did we learn through that process? That's the process that the essay is asking you for. You need to talk about your growth as a person and, and what you can bring to the table since you have now gone through something that has allowed you to grow. Here are a few resources that um, I would like to share with you. Um, again, this is the College Essay Guy, and uh, let me show you a couple of different things on here since we have some time. He has some sample essays as well, um, but some brainstorming, it's like the essence objects exercise. I use that all the time. Feelings and needs exercise um, and the values exercise. So when you pull these up, he actually has videos where he walks you through this process. Um, and then he allows you to sort of explore the different values that he's listed and, and maybe consider if that's something that's critical in your life and maybe something you could talk about in your essay. It, it's a great jumping off point. Another resource um, that Juan so wonderfully shared, um, a lot of universities share the, the essays that worked. Um, so, and some of the, some of the tips that they say is to allow, uh, allow yourself plenty of time to write the essay. Um, one of my tips that I tell all my students is give yourself at least two days where you don't even think about it. You don't look at it. You don't talk to anybody about it. You just let it live in a totally separate room. And then we've had a clear head come back to it, read it again. Does it read the same way? Does it make you feel the same way? Do you still feel like you're represented on paper? Um, and then let's see, you can actually um, come and look at these different um, essays. So one of the examples of hooks that our students like to talk about, um, that's the very first sentence, the engaging sentence that's going to make you want to read more. Contrary to popular popular belief, mini golf is very challenging. That's a great first sentence. And I think what I've heard a lot of readers say is, is okay, that first sentence is great. Let's go to the second sentence. Do I want to keep reading after the second sentence? So make sure that you can continue that momentum as you move forward with your essay writing. Um, I also, so another example would be Hamilton College. And you can ask for more information if you'd like. Um, we have some awesome essays here as well. So here's that hook that we talked about. 75,000 flipped pages, 11,520 packed boxes, six school maps. This is a great way to start your essay. And I think it initially makes the reader want to continue. Um, another way, uh, again, this is, I want you to read the full essay example, but you can also look at the very end of the essay and typically that conclusion is going to offer you a little bit more summary of, of what the essay has been driven towards the entire like paragraph. So when you're reading and you're revising your essay, maybe sort of read it from bottom to top to make sure that it's consistent throughout. That's just another strategy for revision and to make sure that you're um, editing and you're making it as refined and honed as possible. Um, Okay, Juan, have we had any questions in our chat? So we haven't had any questions as of yet, but if, if anyone else has any questions, well, the one question we did have is we are going to share this presentation um, on our website, and we will also send the recording to those of you that were here tonight and those that registered as well. So if we have um, any friends or family members that registered that weren't able to make it, we will be, make sure to share this with them. But um, if anyone has any questions at this point, please feel free to add them to the Q&A or to the chat feature. Um, Samantha, this is all great information. Just a couple of tips that I like to tell my kids as well is um, to your point about uh, sharing it with a trusted friend, right? Does it sound like you? Another way to see it is if you were to drop it in the middle of the cafeteria, would someone pick it up, but they know it's about you? Right. Um, does it read like it's you and would that give your reader insight to who you are um, as, as as a person? Um, the other thing is, um, and I so I'm in Georgia and we just had a big deadline um, this past weekend. Um, two of our state schools had deadlines and 
one thing that um, I noticed in reading one of my students' essays is that on the comments side that he shared with me, he had three other people commenting on his essays with conflicting messages, right? And so I think it's great to seek feedback from someone that you trust, but just be careful that you're not asking too many people because everyone will have a different idea of what that essay should be or could be. And that at some point might cloud your, your mind and your thoughts. So just be, be careful with that and not asking too many people to provide feedback because then you'll be getting those conflicting messages. Um, let's see, we did have a couple of questions just come in. Um, so here's one. How would I include the fact that I'm a club president in my essay? What can I do to connect it? That's a that's a great question. Um, if if you don't mind, Juan, I'll start with this. Um, so I have a lot of students who they have great resumes, right? Like I think you all again have been working on your resume and on your experiences. So the fact that you're a club president is wonderful. Tell me more about what you've done. Has there been a project that you that you were part of within that club that has you know allowed you to invest your time in a way that maybe relates to what you want to do in the future? And what's in what way have the skills that you've gained as club president, if that's peer elected, if that's faculty nominated, sort of again, you're gonna brag on yourself, but talk about those those experiences in a way that you can provide meaningful, like even anecdotal context to. And then related to that, um, should I talk about my major in the essay? Absolutely. Um, if if it is, if it works with the remainder of your theme, um, I think that I think that your major is really critical to the experiences that you've had. So one example I like to use a lot where I live, we have several different um, medical hubs, and we have a lot of our community who are in the medical field. Um, I think that that those are great resources. So if you want to be in the medical field, go get some volunteer hours at your local hospital or volunteer um, at depending on, you know, obviously what grade you're in, um, get those experiences. So that's more you can talk about and how you actually have had experiences that align with your major and what you want to do in the future. Um, if you want to be in the medical field and you had this great experience, maybe at a, at a clinic over the summer, that could be a really great anecdote and a great story to talk about. That's a, an awesome narrative that will show that you're already investing in your major. Any other questions that you all might have? This is my favorite thing to well, talk about. So I hope that I hope that it's been helpful for y'all. <laughs> well, Samantha, thank you so much for for your help again with this session. I know it it's a big topic, especially now that kids are working on their essays. Um, and like I said, we will post this on the SACAC website. We will also be sure to share this presentation with everyone. Um, if you have any further questions, just feel free to reach out to the registration link where you all um, signed up. And thank you all for, for joining us and have a great rest of your evening and week. Y'all have a good night. Thank you.